Jenani Jakalia Luam, born around 1922 and passing away on February 16, 1977, served as the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda from 1974 to 1977. He emerged as one of the most influential leaders of the modern church in Africa, leaving behind a legacy that transcends his untimely demise. Notably, his life and tragic death played a crucial role in shaping the political and religious landscape of Uganda during a tumultuous period. Early Life Jenani Luam was born in the village of Makwini in the Kitgam district to Ekoli parents. His educational journey took him to Gulu High School and Boraboro Teacher Training College where he later served as a primary school teacher. His spiritual transformation occurred in 1948 when he converted to Christianity. Seeking a deeper understanding of his faith, he enrolled in Bualasi Theological College in 1949. Career Jinani Luam's career in the church took shape in 1950 when he became associated with St. Philip's Church in Gulu. Over the years, he progressed in his religious vocation, getting ordained as a deacon in 1953 and as a priest in the subsequent year. He rendered his services in the Upper Nile Diocese of Uganda and later in the Diocese of Mbel. In 1969, he achieved the milestone of being consecrated as the Bishop of the Diocese of Northern Uganda at Gulu. After five years, Luam ascended to the position of Archbishop of the Metropolitan Province of Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and Boga, in Zaire. Notably, he became the second African to hold this prestigious position, signifying his prominence within the church hierarchy. Arrest and Death Archbishop Jenani Luam distinguished himself as a vocal critic of the excesses of President Idi Amin's regime, which assumed power in 1971. In 1977, he delivered a strong protest note to Amin, condemning arbitrary killings and unexplained disappearances. This courageous stance marked him as a prominent figure challenging the oppressive policies of the government. However, on February 16, 1977, Luam's life took a tragic turn. He, along with two cabinet ministers, Verene Wilson Orema and Charles Obert of Fambai, was arrested. A rally in Kampala, convened by Idi Amin, witnessed the accused being paraded before the public. The archbishop and other church leaders were accused of treason. The official narrative suggested that the three were killed in a car accident while being transported to an interrogation center. However, the condition of Luam's body, riddled with bullets, contradicted this account. Henry Kayemba, a minister in Amin's government, later revealed in his book that the bodies showed signs of being shot multiple times. Witness testimonies later confirmed that Luam and his colleagues were taken to an army barracks, subjected to abuse, then ultimately shot. While there were reports implicating Amin in pulling the trigger, show trial at Nile Mansions. The advertised, very important event at Nile Mansions turned out to be an ostentatious and crude show trial of the Archbishop, cynically staged by Amin and his henchmen. The Trump up charge was attempting to overthrow the Amin regime. At the end of the long sham trial, Vice President Mustafa Adraisi turned to the gathering and asked, What shall we do with these traitors? The assembled soldiers rode back, kill them. The question was asked three times, and each time the answer was the same. A group of soldiers then stepped forward and separated the archbishop from the other bishops. Some bishops wanted to accompany him, but the soldiers insisted, His Excellency wants to see him alone. As he was being led away, the archbishop turned to his fellow bishops, smiling gently, and said, I am not afraid. In all this, I see the hand of God. This was the last time he was seen in public. He was taken inside Nile Mansions, where Idi Amin was waiting for him. The physical abuse and humiliation started there. Nile Mansions is the second station of the cross. Later that afternoon, at about 4 p.m., the Archbishop was delivered, now as a battered and abused prisoner, to the headquarters of the State Research Bureau, the regime's much-dreaded secret police outfit, in Nakasero. He was taken to dungeon cell number one, located in the basement of the building. Amin and the Dark Deed At night, Didi Amin himself suddenly arrived at the premises, accompanied by a select entourage, including close associates Bob Astles and Lieutenant Col Jamba Masigatsi. 
the Archbishop was taken from his cell to the first floor office of Farouk Minawa, where Amin and the team were waiting. It was in this office that Amin committed the dark deed. After taunting and savaging him for some time, Ramin then shot the Archbishop at about 9 p.m. The Archbishop was actually murdered at a spot, Minawa's office, directly overlooking the compound of his own cathedral, All Saints, some 100 meters away. This building then is the third station of the cross. Murdered alongside the Archbishop that night were two cabinet ministers, Obert Ofambai and Ereneo Oriema. The latter, incidentally, had been the Archbishop's primary school teacher in Kitgam. The morning of February 17th, the government statement was put out narrating the official lie that the Archbishop and the two ministers had died in a car accident. While church leaders and the family were waiting to bury the Archbishop at Namerem, soldiers were already on their way, secretly transporting the body to the north. The military contingent reached Makwini in Chua Kitgam district, the ancestral home of the Archbishop, in the evening of February 17th, it was already dark. Nervous and afraid for their own safety, they decided to quietly drive past Makwini, continuing to Bonabona military barracks in Madiope, some 24 kilometers north. Here they spent the night. This is the fourth station of the cross. It was daytime on February 18th when the soldiers returned with their consignment to Makwini. This time they headed straight to the family compound and near the trading center, hoping to quietly bury him there. They found Mama Erini, large bishop's mother and family matriarch, alone at home. She firmly objected to their plan a long time ago, we gave Janoni to God and the church. He doesn't belong to us anymore. He now belongs to God and his people. She insisted that they take the body to the churchyard by the primary school at Wigweng, the hill beyond the little valley of Oralabelo. After a tense standoff, the soldiers eventually yielded and proceeded to Wigweng, thus directed by Mama Erini. The family compound is the fifth station of the cross. Trouble sinking a grave. At Wigweng, on the first day, the soldiers labored in vain to sink a grave at three different spots in the churchyard. At night, exhausted, hungry and afraid, the soldiers abandoned the coffin inside the little church, saying they would return after resting and eating. In fact, they did not come back until the following morning. Their overnight absence provided a singular opportunity for a daring coterie of relatives and friends to sneak in and, using a lantern lamp, fully examine the body in the coffin. This viewing has provided us details about the desecration of the body and the gruesome wounds and torture inflicted on the Archbishop.